Good afternoon. In this A3 tutorial, we're going to look at three wire, three phase systems, which are inherently have what's called a floating neutral. So perhaps the best way to, to, to explain these systems from the start is to, is to quickly sketch them. Um, so here we have our three phase supply, which feeds off to our three phase load. We'll call these uh, VA, VB, VC, that will be ZA, that will be ZB, and that will be ZC. Now we can see here in the system that it has three wires. It's a three wire system and it has three phases. It's also called a floating neutral because the neutral point here on our load is not connected to anything. It's not connected back to the neutral point on our supply it floats, and hence the term floating neutral. Now, a commonly misunderstood or a misassumed thing is that the neutral point here, which is often tied to ground if it's a transformer or something like that, this point here, of people, a lot of people assume, is the same voltage as this point here. That is not always the case. In fact, it usually is not the case unless this is an idealized system. If it's a perfectly ideal system and everything's perfectly balanced, then yeah, sure, they will be the same. But that's more through coincidence than actual reality. So let's look at what happens when we've got a non-ideal, a, a non let's call it a realistic system. And we'll work with, uh, we'll say our voltages here, we'll go through the numbers. Uh, VA, we'll call that uh, 230 volts with an angle of zero. We'll say VB is also 230 volts with an angle of minus 120. And VC is also 230 with an angle of minus 240. And so these are our supply voltages here, which in turn are feeding our loads. So let's call it, uh, we'll say, we'll keep, we'll keep with purely resistive loads just to make it a little bit easier. Um, we'll call ZA, uh, we'll call that 3 ohms. We'll call uh, this one here, we'll call this 4 ohms, and we'll call ZB 5 ohms. So the first thing we need to think about is what currents are flowing in this system. Um, and we, if it was a 4 wire system with an ideal neutral between here, then this voltage and this voltage would be the same, in which case we could simply use Ohm's law. However, we don't have this point of connection here to validate that series of calculations, so we can't do it. But we do have a theorem that explains the relationship between this point and this point, and this theorem is called Milman's. And Milman's theorem is it's a, it's a fairly large expression, but it's quite a simple expression. And it basically says that this voltage here, between here and here, is VA over ZA plus VB over ZB plus VC over ZC, all over 1 over ZA plus 1 over ZB plus 1 over ZC plus 1 over the impedance between here. Now we don't have an impedance, uh, a wire connecting here, so therefore that's, an inf that's infinity, 1 over infinity is 0. So this term goes to 0, which makes life a little bit easier. Now if we go through and insert all these numbers into this expression, which I'm not going to go through, I'll let you go and do that calculation, but I'll tell you that that point here uh, this solves down to a voltage and this using these particular numbers of 34.48 at an angle of plus 21.8 degrees. <clears throat> using this perfectly balanced supply and this unbalanced load, Milman's theorem tells us that voltage potential between here and here is 
34 volts at an angle of 21 degrees. So we could uh, we could draw that in uh, vector form down here. So here we have VA 230 at an angle of zero. Down here we have VB 230 minus 120, and up here we have VC 230 minus 240. And our voltage between here is 34 at 21 degrees. So we've got an angle of 21 degrees there. We now want to find out what currents are flowing in this system. And the process for doing that is, now that we know what this voltage is, is quite simple. Because we can see that we know from Ohm's law that the current through something the current through an impedance is the voltage over it divided by the impedance. This is basic Ohm's law stuff. So, <coughs> pardon me, we don't know what the voltage across here is, but because of Milman's theorem, we, can, we do. We know that the voltage here is 230, and we know the voltage here is 34. So the voltage here, if we consider this as being this is effectively our circuit, our voltage here must be the difference between the two. Now this is, you know, it's a fairly straightforward logical expression. So we can see, if I, I'll, I'll write it out a little bit clearer. We've got a supply here of 230 at an angle of zero. We've got a potential difference here, which is uh, 34 at 21 and our load here. So the voltage across here must be the difference between this voltage and this voltage. It's only plausible. So we can see that the current through phase A here is the difference between these two voltages, VA minus VON, over our impedance. Two hundred and thirty at an angle of zero minus thirty four point four eight at an angle of twenty one point eight divided by our impedance of three at zero. We can then do use our rectangular polar conversion to solve this, and we come up with a solution of sixty six amps at an angle of minus three degrees. So if we come back to our vector diagram here, we could draw this in and we would get a solution that would come and look a little bit like that. To find the current through phase B, it's exactly the same process. The voltage of phase B over this, subject to that there, so it's VB minus VON over ZB, which is 230 minus 120 minus 34.48, 21, all over our impedance for phase B is 5 ohms, and that will give us a solution of 51, an angle of minus 124. find IC, it's again the same process, VC over, R minus VON over ZC, 230 minus 240 minus 34.48 at an angle of 21, all over 4 ohms, and our solution there is 59, angle of 120.
bendición. So, with this system, with this three-phase, three-wire system with a floating neutral, we've gone through and we've shown how this point here is not the same voltage as this point here. A potential difference exists between these two points, and we can find that by using Milman's theorem in an unbalanced system. In a perfectly balanced system, those voltages would be the same, but in an unbalanced system, they are not. We can find the potential difference between here using Milman's theorem, and in this particular case it worked out to be 34 volts. Knowing that the voltage across here, being the difference between our applied voltage and that voltage difference, we can therefore calculate the current through each of these phases. And we can see that the magnitudes and the, we can see the imbalance in the magnitudes and the imbalance in the whole system. I hope that's cleared up, a three-phase, three-wire system with a floating neutral, solved for currents. Thanks for watching.